<laughs> well, Thomas, uh, glad you could make it to the USA and come see our loft, uh, the Gannis family loft. Uh, to my left is my lovely wife, Deborah Gannis. Good morning. And uh, we're gonna do a live video of inside the Gannis family loft. And I wanna show you uh, my four first national or not national, but four uh, first place million dollar race winners and uh, some ace pigeons and and uh, Mona Lisa, of course, and, and some birds I think people are interested in. Uh, so follow me and let's, uh, let's put a little show on for everybody. The loft is uh, about 120 feet long, it's 12 feet wide. Uh, you'll see all the sections. I built the loft before we built our house in 1987 and uh, really haven't changed much. Uh, pretty happy with everything. Everything turned out good. And uh, the birds stay healthy with the, with the good loft and then you got healthy birds. But uh, without a loft, you, uh, you're gonna fight it forever and most likely not be successful. So you gotta have ventilation and a good, good strong breeding loft and a good loft, and that's uh, got a lot to do with uh, winning races. But over here to the left are four of the uh, first place South Africa million dollar final race winners. Final races are the most important thing. That's uh, that's the that's the race and that's the bird that everybody. Uh, thinks about in the future, but uh, the bird you have on there now is Laura's the big winner today. I bred her myself, GFL 267, 2015. She won the race by 15 minutes ahead, came by herself, a breakaway bird. Uh, and then we go over here, this is the 2014 Sanjay 1, bred in Germany. Very, very good hen also. Uh, she bred several uh, top readers now, and I'm very happy with her, and we'll look at her in a few minutes. This is the 2013 first place final race, million dollar, uh, also bred in Germany, called Hallover. One of my favorite hens, a uh, very, very good pigeon. I, uh, I've been very successful with Hallover birds, and my good friend in Johannesburg, uh, Jerry Uri, he uh, has several children of Hallover. Uh, when I buy the National Ace Pigeon, he takes it home and keeps it at his house and, and breeds a couple sets of eggs before he ships the birds over to the United States for me. And uh, I let him do that for all the help he does and he's a great guy, him and his son and his wife. Uh, good friends of mine. and. And it's a good way to pay Jury and his son back for all they've done for me over the years. Keeping my birds healthy when I buy them in Africa, safe, and uh, does a great job. But uh, the final bird, Untamed Desert, she's the 2012 first place final race, million dollar race. She was bred by Idricamp. Uh, Really great people. If you've never been to Idra Camp's Loft, I would say you should go there. You'll enjoy yourself. They have fantastic pigeons. They have great results, and uh, it's a great experience. So uh, I see. You, I see. There's one missing. There's one missing. Uh, the 2017, 2018 winner, which was just a month ago or so. Mix is her name. A checker hen. She was a breakaway pigeon. Uh, she was first in the South Africa million dollar final race, 18 minutes ahead. Uh, I handled her today after the race. She's a perfect hand in the hand. Very strong body, medium size, tight one pin tail. Everybody that handled her was impressed. Uh, so uh, when I seen everybody looking at her and everybody's thoughts and what my thoughts were after three or four seconds of holding her, I knew I had to buy her. She did cost me uh, a very high price, but when you went the best, you have to pay for it. And 
Yeah. And uh, I want the best and I want to win. You bought the mo two most expensive I bought, I million bought, dollar uh, winners. Yeah, I bought. Laura's the big winner today. She sold for 100,000 US in 2015. And then Mix this last year uh, was 94,000 something. But uh, I don't keep a lot of pigeons. I have about 75, 80 pair on a high side. I don't think there's that many good pigeons in the world, so I don't want a lot of pigeons. I only try to breed off the best and offer the best that I have to the buyers. I do kill a lot of birds because we all know that even when you make the best to the best, they're not going to produce all top quality birds or top breeders. And all I could do is when I sell a pigeon, the bird handles great, it's DNA tested, all birds I sell. And you are getting what you pay for, and they will be very nice. But uh, let me show you a little more around here. Uh, over the years, I've bought 42 National Ace Pigeons. In my lifetime, there's a few of the pictures on this wall, uh, like President, uh, First National Ace, Topo, Godfather, Icon, Hollywood, Mighty King, Heavenly Angel, Aviator, which was one of my best. He's the grandfather of the 2018 or 2017 Victoria Falls winner in South in in, in Zimbabwe uh, when he was mated to Mona Lisa. Uh, so uh, and that bird's name was uh, the Red Monkey, and I bought him back also in the auction. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that, but I, I bought National Ace Long Distance Pigeons, Middle Distance Pigeons, some Short Distance Pigeons. Uh, the Time Machine was First National Ace Long Distance Pigeon. Uh, Aviator was also the Olympiad Long Distance Pigeon. And I've done great with uh, the Belgium, Holland, and Germany birds. So now I, I changed more into one loft racing. I believe that one loft racing is going to be the future. For many fanciers around the world, that's where the money is. It's like casinos, when they start putting casinos up, it brings in the people. And so will one lot races. It will bring in the people, it will bring in the money, and it will give the fanciers the opportunity to win a lot of money. So I also believe that one loft winners or early birds in one loft races will produce better birds in one loft racing. It's a proven fact, and uh, since 2012, when I bought the first and second place winner, I made it set and spun silver to Untamed Desert. Untamed Desert was first, set and spun silver was second. Made it in together, bred Margo's treasure. Bought uh, a pigeon called Sun City on Pipa. I made it Margo's treasure with uh, Sun City. And he bred Laura's the big winner today, the first place million dollar race winner. So it's, it's, uh, it was quite easy to figure out that million dollar race winners or birds that are early in the final race uh, will produce winners or top birds in the final race for years to come. It's the quickest way for success in one loft racing. Uh, then we have over here is a pigeon called Wolverine. I purchased him from my good friend Philip Norman, Nicholas and Philip Norman from Belgium. He's the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of the 2008 first place million dollar race winner. I went there for that reason because I wanted that blood in 2008. It was a very tough final race for the million dollar race. That's the year that uh, uh, Bertie flew and is, is one of the top racers in the million dollar races. So I went there to buy something off Abraham and I bought the Wolverine. Wolverine bred, Mike has a very good one. Uh, one of my pigeons, she won over 100,000 US dollars in the million dollar races. She was 53rd, the last bird home in 2013 from 411 miles, the longest distance they flew the million dollar race. 
Uh, and then uh, she was the second bird in the $1,000 car races, so she won 55000 in that. And then she went on to be a super breeder. Uh, going back to these two birds, Wolverine uh, bred, like I said, Mike has a very good one, $100,000 winner. And then in 2017 at Victoria Falls, I was lucky enough to win first place in the final race with the Red Monkey. The mother to the Red Monkey is a full sister to Mike has a very good one. And that pigeon won $200,000. And then you go back to 2016. I mated the Wolverine to his daughter. Mike has a very good one. So a father-daughter mating. I sold my good friend Ado Family Loft. A son of this mating. He bred the second place final race Victoria Falls winner winning $100,000 came with the winner, just walked in a few seconds after the winning pigeon. So if you add that up, that's a quick uh, $400,000 that was won off Wolverine with, uh, with the Mike has a very good one family. So uh, we can walk through the loft, I'll show see, you some key see some live pigeons now. And, yeah. uh, this loft is clean from top to bottom, 365 days of the year. Uh, I do have 25 or 26 individual breeding pens. I do also breed community breeding. Uh, they have two foot by four foot nest boxes and I don't put many birds in these lofts. There's, uh, looks like there's seven pair in here. All birds are DNA tested to guarantee the parentage because I, I believe that if you don't, you, you're not 100% sure you're getting what you're paying for. I would recommend everybody that buys a pigeon that, uh, that costs a few bucks and to get them DNA tested before you buy them. So uh, get your pedigree, get your uh, DNA certificate, make sure you're paying and you're getting what you're paying for. But, uh, one of the breeding lofts, and they have a uh, 12 foot Avery that most of the summer they get to go out and they get a bath twice a week and uh, they can uh, relax out there. This is an uh, incredible mating. Uh, we're looking at now a Sun City on the left that's on your video. Beautiful cock. Like I mentioned, he was bought on, on Peepa, and uh, he's the father of Rebellious that Hoyman has, and now he's also the father to the Pencil Hen, which is next to him. Mora is the big winner today, the winner of the million dollar final race by 15 minutes. So I made it father to daughter, and two of these babies will be on Peepa uh, on her auction site later this year. Most likely the two eggs that she's going to lay here in the next four or five days. But uh, a really incredible mating. I've had beautiful birds off this pair and uh, so far everybody that has children of Sun City with uh, Laura as a big winner is very very happy with them. But uh, one, of the one of the best couples I have. this loft, I bought uh, the male on top, he's a millionaire, he's uh, from Germany, and he's the father to Sanjay, Sanjay won the first place final race winner in a million dollar race. Uh, I made it him to my California Classic winner last year. She's a uh, granddaughter of Mona Lisa. Again, uh, made it to, when Mona Lisa was made it to Aviator, uh, she, uh, she was first in the clock from 305 miles uh, against 900 some plus pigeons in the final race and won $75,000 last year. She's a great hen. 
uh, strong body, beautiful bird, and she's off the best blood I have. So we got Aviator and Mona Lisa again, made it on the millionaire, which is the father of Sanjay. I think it's a good mating, and we'll uh, have two babies off this couple also on Peepa later on this year. But these, these individuals are eight feet long and four feet wide. When the babies get about 10 days old, they, the bowl goes to the floor. All the floors are heated, so it keeps the babies nice and warm when, the, when it's chilly in the morning. And I put the second bowl up on top, which uh, they can start laying uh, their next set of eggs. Another great pair. This is style Orphus, the, che the checker cocked up on top. He's the uh, second place South Africa million dollar race winner. Uh, when he was second, Rebellious was first. I was there for the race in 2011, 2012. And when he came, he landed on the landing board or on the roof at the million dollar race and he was dancing and crowing. He looked fantastic. I told my wife then I have to have this pigeon and I ended up buying it. Uh, I didn't buy him at the auction but I bought him afterwards because I couldn't get him out of my mind. So I think he's a great pigeon. He also bred uh, the 22nd place bird last year in the Hoosier race from 350 miles. I did send two direct children of him there and one of them uh, was very early uh, against 980 some birds. The blue hen on, uh, on the right, it's a very, very nice hen. Her name is uh, Sorrento. She was bred in Africa. She was fifth place on the final million dollar race from 411 miles. That was the year when they went, that's the farthest they've ever raced, the million dollar race. And uh, I think one of the toughest races ever. There was only uh, 53 day birds and it was very hot and humid and uh, very difficult. And that's the type of birds I like to buy. Birds that have to push hard and uh, from a, a greater distance as a youngster. If you want to look at all these, but this loft here is the main loft with uh, all my Mona Lisa children. I have uh, 15 Mona Lisa males and uh, only three Mona Lisa daughters. Uh, so 15 sons and three daughters. But uh, the ones I have, I, I like very much. I want to. I want to mention this pair up on top. Uh, Thomas, come in here and maybe we can oh, maybe we keep them in there. But <clears throat> these are the, uh, the two blues up on top are the parents to the red monkey. That was first in the uh, Victoria Falls race this last year. And the hen on the right is a full sister. So Mike has a very good one. And the male on the left is a direct son of Aviator Mona Lisa. But I was lucky enough to buy the parents back and uh, they'll be breeding birds here. And they'll also be two babies in, uh, in, on FIFA later this year for auction. The male with the blue white flights here, he's, he's a fantastic breeder. Uh, he's, he's a son of Rocket Man, made it to Mona Lisa. Uh, and his brother, is up on top here. His name is Mozart and uh, his uh, daughters have bred really good birds also for Ado Family Loft and they were equal first in I think five or six final races. Uh, he's a very very good breeder and he's a full brother to uh, the other Rockin' Man Mona Lisa son. It's a very nice cock here. This blue cock is is off of uh, Rocket, the old Rocket male from Holland. He was the first national ace short distance pigeon. And I think a lot of people in the world know of, of Rocket. Uh, 
and Rocket was made at Mona Lisa when he was bred. But just just last year in 2017, I had five big wins for five really early birds uh, that won, I don't know, I'm gonna guess 380,000 or something in one lot races. And every one of them was a grandchild of Mona Lisa. And in a little bit, I'll let you see Mona Lisa. She's uh, 12 years old. She handles like a two or three year old. She's a magnificent pigeon. Uh, but she quit laying eggs in 2014. So uh, we're, kind of, uh, we're kind of out of luck with there. But all these, all the males in here are all sons of uh, Mona Lisa. And they've all produced very, very good pigeons. Uh, so I, I keep them all in here, all together. But very, very good birds. I don't keep a lot of pigeons. I only want the best. We go from there. But there's another loft. And uh, there's, these are all, all the hens in here are daughters of Sun City. And all the males in here are sons of Set and Spun Silver. It's been a very good cross uh, with both the uh, top birds from Million Dollar Races. And I, I had 12 of the children of, off of these birds in the final race in 2017, 2018 in the Million Dollar Race last year. And out of 12 going to the final race, all 12 returned in the top 1,200 places. 1,200 places sounds bad but there was still uh, 1,000 or 1,100 birds that didn't make it back. And several of these were, uh, you know, in the top three or 400. So, uh, but the Sun City birds did really well last year in the million dollar race. They didn't win it. I wish they would have. Hopefully, hopefully I'll have a grandchild of Sun City win uh, in the future. And like I mentioned before, Sun City is the father to two first place million dollar final race winners. This has never happened before in the world. And uh, he's got to be one of the top breeding cocks for one loft final races in the world. I mean, to win twice in a million dollar race, you're asking a, a very, a very lot. Mike, any advice to the people watching? What do you do before you send the pigeons to the race? To the because you've been sending out pigeons today, this morning? Yeah, but I, I'm going to probably run late, so it probably won't happen until tomorrow. Okay. But what I like to do is I, I like to vaccinate the babies when they're 20 days old and they're with the parents in the nest. I vaccinate for PMV, paratyphoid. I found that if you vaccinated them at a young age like that, they don't get stressed, they don't go down at all. The next day or a few hours later, they look like you never vaccinated them. Uh, where if you shoot, if you vaccinate your babies when they're 40 days old, they look like hell for a day and a half. They don't eat, they just kind of hunch up. Uh, but if you do it at 20 days old, they're fine. So I, I normally vaccinate them at 20 days old and then I don't ship to one loft race until they're say 45 days old. Okay, maybe even up to maybe 50, 55 days, somewhere in that area. And a week before I ship to the race, I vaccinate them with their double, with the second vaccine of PMV paratyphoid. So they're all vaccinated twice before they go to the lofts. And doing it this way, I have very few pigeons that get sick in one loft races. Most of the time, my birds are all there. Uh, last year in the million dollar race, I sent 104. I sold five uh, before the first, first training race. So realistically, I only had 99. And out of all the birds that I sent, there was only one that died or got lost or something happened to out of 105 before they started training past 10 or 10 miles or whatever that is. So only one out of 105 either got sick, lost, or got killed. And I thought that was great because I think the percentage when you send to the million dollar or any race in the world, uh, several birds are gonna get sick 
And, uh, but if you do it this way, I think it's good. These are, uh, these are individual breeding pens. They're, they're a little smaller. They're four feet by four feet, but uh, they work out fine with the birds. They also have their own Avery's. Uh, the cock on the right is a late hatch. He's gonna be really, really good. He's a late hatch, full brother to Sen Spun Silver. I think he's only dropped four flights. Uh, I'm maturing him here. I'm gonna let him raise some babies. And uh, the hen on the left is, uh, is down from, uh, she's a daughter of Wolverine. So it's gonna be a, a good mating. And uh, they're young, they're both really young. But I'll, I'll probably use them. I took one set of babies off them, which is on the floor. And I'll probably use them as pumpers this year to raise some babies off the, uh, the parents of these birds. I, I don't, like I said, I don't keep a lot of pigeons, so I got to do the best I can and, and uh, go forward. As you can see here, this is a nice male, but this pair is used as a pair of pumpers. Uh, there's a card up on the right side of the wall. I put the ring number of the father on top and the mother below. I put the date that they laid the eggs. If there's a little star on the paper, then it, it means that you put low band numbers on the babies, uh, either for, for PIPA or for other fanciers. I, I like to keep the numbers low off the main pigeons. But uh, there's uh, 18 individual pens here. Um, you can see the little cars up there. I use most of these birds, and these are very good pigeons, but I use these for pumpers. And you say, why do I, why do, I do that? Because when I switch eggs under these pigeons, I don't have to worry about birds breaking them, going in the wrong box. Uh, and I do DNA test all the birds, so when I breed in a community loss, uh, before I ship the bird, they're DNA tested to make sure but this is a safer way, so when I do switch eggs off, off the key breeders, I don't have to worry about something happening to them. And uh, a lot of these are younger 2018 pigeons. There are some uh, 2017s in here, but, but uh, I like breeding out of younger birds, uh, not for racing. I don't like that often of breeding yearlings and sending the birds to a big race, I think you're gonna breed better pigeons off of two, three, four-year-olds and off your hit pairs, even up to 10 years old if you have to. But, uh, but it's, it's a safe way and you can see the little cards up there. Again, this is off Wolverine with, with Hallover. Uh, her number, her last three numbers is 270. But uh, I think that's gonna be a good mating also. But, uh, I try every day to do everything correct and we keep everything clean. I do very little medication only when I know something's wrong and that's not that often. They do receive vitamins every day. They do get the Javadi grit that I get in from Belgium. Uh, and uh, as long as you leave your lofts clean every day, you feed a good quality grain, you give them the minerals and the grit. Uh, and you vaccinate every year all your pigeons for PMB paratypoid. I, I think you have less problems. But, uh, and don't overcrowd. I mean, I have lots of room and not that many pigeons. Uh, I think that's the, the best I can tell you. With a good loft and good hygiene and good pigeons, you have a good chance. And then you need a little luck. You know, you can't win a race without luck. Uh, so uh, that's what I believe, you know. That's what do you think, Thomas? Yeah, no, it's, I think, very good advice. Uh, what else can I talk about? I think we can go to the, one, to show one of the main pigeons. Yeah, let's uh, look at, uh, let's... Wolverine, some city, maybe. Perfect. I need to, I need to mate Wolverine up today. So I took can, his hand away. Can we bring the hand to him? We'll do it. Yeah, let's okay. do it now. Perfect, I'll follow you. I have a security system, I have, I have monitors, cameras on everything as you can see here. 
outside, inside. Uh, you just have to do that nowadays. It's too, uh, too risky otherwise. This is where we pretty much do the drinkers and and we got a refrigerator for the help and and uh, we keep nest bowls and things in there. I keep my hens in here that I'm going to make to several hens to uh, one cock uh, or if I'm getting birds in that I purchased I'll put them in here for two weeks, vaccinate them, give them pills for canker, paratyphoid and make sure the droppings are good and they're healthy before they get to go to the other birds. Let's maybe show this team. Yeah, this is uh, this is the Portugal winners from 2016. I bought the first six. Very happy with them. I think the uh, the agave golden race in Portugal is a, is a very good race. Uh, Rui does a great job. Uh, I'm planning on going there this year. I have never been to Portugal. I see Marcial is watching. And that's his pigeon. Oh, that's super. Uh, you know what? That's a really, really good bird, 034. I, I love her. Uh, very, very nice pigeon. Even, you know, all these all these are a little bit of different, a little different, but they're all quality. Uh, they all handle nice. And uh, like Mirmar Simam, the first place winner, you know, she was three minutes ahead. I like pigeons that break away. And when I see one that wins by several minutes, it's uh, it's more interesting to me. Uh, it's a pure winner, yeah. and and a pigeon like that isn't afraid to leave and fly all the way home by itself. But uh, this was a great group. I also bought the 2017 top six in Portugal. Um, but uh, winners breed winners, and I've said that all my life. If People that know me from 30 years ago, I always said winners read winners and no one likes a winner. Uh, when you start winning in your club or combine or around the world, there are people that are class people and uh, they do call you and congratulate you, but there's a lot of jealousy in the sport. And when I won a million dollar race in the Victoria Falls race in the last couple of years, it was amazing about how many phone calls I got from great people around the world I know I tried emailing everybody back. I may not have reached everybody, but I want to thank you for your emails and your calls and your text messages. Uh, it makes you feel like all the hard work you've done over the years is worth it. And I try hard. My wife is my big, my big part of this. Uh, we've been together for 40 years, and without her, I wouldn't have this. And she knows everything about pigeons, even though she says she doesn't. But if I'm gone, she can ban. She can she can do everything. She can she'll know if a bird's not right. Uh, she does She can do anything I do. Uh, so she's pretty clever at it. <laughs> but I'll show you a few of these hens, and then we'll put a hen with uh, with uh, scent with Wolverine. This uh, this is a remarkable pigeon. Her name is Robin's Island. Uh, that's if you can see her number. But uh, she was second place in the final million dollar race. And uh, she came with Halover. They were two birds that were pretty far ahead of the rest, uh, close to an hour. But she had incredible results. But if I'm not mistaken, she was also uh, either first or second grand average, somewhere in that area. She had many, many top prizes in the races, in the million dollar race. But the most important thing is she was second place. She came with the winner in the final race. The final race is everything. It's the Super Bowl of pigeon racing. Uh, it's a very difficult race and, and uh, when you have a winner, you really appreciate it. <laughs> but Robin's Island. Another first place winner. Her name is Sanjay. Sanjay won. She's from Germany. 
Many pigeons, many winning pigeons come from Germany. They have fantastic pigeons. I've, I bought several birds from Germany and always been very successful with them. One of the most beautiful pigeons I have, Sanjay One. Also bred very good breeders. Just a class act, first place South Africa million dollar final race winner. So with Mix coming this year, I'll have five first place winners and uh, pretty excited about it. Perfect. Here's the queen of the house. This is GFL 487. 2006. You don't need to check. <laughs> no. You know it by heart. <laughs> this this pigeon will die here. This is Mona Lisa. She's uh, she's the best pigeon I've ever owned. Even though I had 42 national ace pigeons or Olympic pigeons from Europe, uh, this hen is probably and I if I gave you the number of birds that she's probably. The grandmother or mother too that won big races, you would say I'm a liar. I'm going to leave the number out, but uh, I bred roughly a hundred children of her and I would, I could honestly say 85 were very, very, very good pigeons uh, as breeders. And several of her children won big races uh, over the years. Here in America, one loft races, they've also scored in the top 50 in the million dollar races. And uh, just this last year, like I mentioned, five of my top birds were all grandchildren of her. But uh, she's, uh, she, she has a magnificent wing. Uh, she's also, her father was the Phantom. The Phantom was the family of Finicky 5000. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some names out. She, he's like the he's like an uncle to Finicky 5000. So she's really heavy into Finicky 5000 blood. Uh, she did race herself. She flew up to 400 miles, six races every week. She flew from a 100, a 150, a 200, a 250, a 300, a 350, and a four. So she raced very hard as a baby uh, in a one lap race. And then I had the opportunity to buy her back. So I bought her and I bought the Da Vinci cock, which also flew in the same race, uh, which was down from the Golden Matins, which a lot of people have. But if you can, if you can look, you can, can, you, can you see the vibration in her wing on the camera? Now she's 12 years old, and when you hold her, she just, she just vibrates. She's, uh, she's, she's a magnificent pigeon. She has a full body, round as an apple, always is. Just, uh, she never got sick. She stays in perfect health all, all 12 years of her life. Um, I think that has a lot to do with, with the quality of her children. Maybe that's why they're such great breeders. Um, very few of her children were not top breeders. I've never seen a pigeon that bred so many top breeders or racers in my life. All right, so another top breeder. This is, uh, this is 411. Her name is Abigail. This hen is a daughter of Mona Lisa. Uh, She's 11 pinner also. She produces a lot of pigeons with 11 flights. I would say three fourths of her babies have 11 flights. She also vibrates like her mother, Mona Lisa. She is the mother to, uh, Mike has a very good one. She's the grandmother of the Red Monkey, the Victoria winner. She, she's, she's bred so many top breeders and racers that if I mention the number, you'd call me a liar also. So uh, 
I have to be very careful with her. She's a 2009. She, I took two eggs off her three weeks ago. Uh, she laid two nice, big, beautiful eggs. She has that beautiful one pin tail, uh, perfect back, strong vents. Uh, just a magnificent, magnificent hen. Very tame. But this is Abigail, GFL 411, mother to Mike has a very good one. And I mentioned earlier about her wins in Victoria Falls the last two years. And uh, what more can I say? She's very, very, very good. There's probably going to be the replacement for Mona Lisa. I think uh, Mike has a very good one. 438. The 13. She was uh, the 53rd bird. A good friend of mine, Paul Smith from England, mentioned that he was up on the roof at the million dollar race watching the birds come. She came in the dark and uh, she won uh, a lot of money. But the most important thing to me was I was so happy to get a day bird from 411, 411 miles in the final race, in the million dollar race. It's just that difficult of a race, but she uh, she's the mother or she's the grandmother to Adol's uh, second place Victoria Falls winner in 2016, and her and this bird's sister bred the first place winner in 2017, and they all go back to the Mona Lisa side, which is 411 Abigail we just looked at with Wolverine. So it's a it's a great mating. It's it's the best some of the best blood I've ever owned. And the nice thing of it is they'll fly 350 to 400 miles and they'll win as babies even when they're 5 months old, 4 months old. They mature quickly. They love headwinds. They love hot heat weather. The hotter the better. Uh, that's the route to go. So now we're going to go see Wolverine. He's, uh, he's going to get, uh, that's him there. He's bred by Philip Norman. He's ready for her. Yeah, he's always ready for another. And I, I could put him with a hen every hour. And he acts the same way. He doesn't beat him up. He doesn't fight him. He's, uh, he's really, really good with him. And that's from uh, Philip Norman, Nicholas and Philip from Belgium, and here's his daughter. Mike has a very good one. So uh, you can tell he's a little excited. Another champion will be born. <laughs> I'm sure. Very, very good pair. Very low. I'll show you Wolverine a little bit. When I'm done showing you Wolverine, he's going to be ready for another head. <laughs> but uh, this is Wolverine. Son of Abraham from Philip Norman. I was lucky enough to have let them per, let me purchase him when I visited Nicholas and Philip. But uh, fantastic, fantastic bloodline. I've had a lot of great pigeons, but this this Abraham blood off Wolverine, they uh, they do very very good in the final races. They may be a little bit late on the short race. 100 miles, but I don't fly. I don't, I have no interest in a 100 mile race. My interest is the final race. Very, 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 very good pigeon. What you're going to notice on, on my birds 
They have very tight eyes. And some people say, what do you mean by tight eye? There's no gap around the eyeballs. They're like socketed in their heads. You should be able to see that on the video at this time. That's very important because when this pigeon has to race against headwinds, the wind blows in their face, and if their eyes have an opening like, like that, some pigeons have that like that all the time. The air gets in there, and then they're going to start tearing up, and the bird's going to have to stop flying. It's not going to fly when his eyes turn into water. I see. Very important. But we're going to try another hand because I think he's ready. <laughs> Mike has a good one finished, and I'm going to do his mother now. Oh. basket if you want to, <laughs> if you want to stand around That's here a little me. while. I think people, it's interesting to see, Mike. What? That's Abigail, the mother to Mike has a good one that we just saw. <laughs> he can just keep going. He's a Casanova, I'll tell you. <laughs> He's a medium-sized male, Wolverine, but uh, he, uh, he's special. Some males will beat the different hand up or whatever, but he'll he'll take every hand. He'll take everyone very yeah. easy. Yeah. How long you let them together now? You know what, I'll, I'll probably leave them together yeah, for a little okay. while. Okay. That's good. Well, I wish she does sit for them. Too well. You can tell he's, he wants her, but she's just not uh, setting up for him. <laughs> Very good pigeon here. I think, in my mind, one of the best in the world. He, uh, this is said, spun silver. He's the second place, second place, million dollar final race winner. He came with the winner, just walked in a few seconds late. 2012. Uh, I I think one. I think he'll be one of my best. Um, his daughter Margot's treasure. I made it into the first place winner from Idra Camp, Untamed Desert. They bred Margot's treasure. I took Margot's treasure, which is the daughter of this cock. Made it her. Made it her to Sun City, and uh, boom, Laura's the big winner today. First place winner. So. Uh, I think he's special. He's my buddy, and he's like uh, Wolverine, medium size. Uh, he'll uh, he'll mate four or five hens in two or three hours, and they're all fertile. An easy guy to goof off with. Uh, the hen here is from Idra Camp. This is Untamed Desert. The first place million dollar final race winner. A fantastic pigeon, the Super Breeder. Um, that was a very difficult race also in 2012, and uh, I was very happy that uh, Idra Camp uh, let me buy her. Uh, I know they, they could buy anything they want, and I was uh, good friends with them, and I was fortunate enough to buy the first place winner on Tame Desert, and I thought, well, I'm going to mate her to him, and they bred the mother of the winner. So Sense Fun Silver is the father of the or second place winner, and then he's also the grandfather of the first place winner. 
So uh, that makes him even more special. He's not just a race winner, he's a proven breeder. Same thing with the uh, Untamed Desert. But again, real strong back. As you can tell, one pin tail. Very important, I think. Very nice wings. Very, very important. All his children have very tight eyes, as you can tell on this video. No gap anywhere around. The eye sear is thick and strong. I like the line from the eye going to the beak. You see that a lot in top top pigeons. It's got very rich eyes. It's a real fighter, this guy. I tell you, he's he's a class act super bird. Gonna be one of the best I've ever owned. And uh, he's already produced several top breeders. Seven spun silver. His ring number. He's bred from bred by a German fancier again, Helmut Mann, a good friend of mine. I was lucky enough to go there after the race, and I bought his father. As you can tell by the, the video, I'm sure the birds are in very good health year-round. I watch them very closely, and uh, I think they have to be in perfect health 365 days a year in order to breed race winners or top breeders. You can't, you can't neglect them for six months and decide, now is the time I'm going to get them healthy and strong and mate them up and breed top birds because it ain't going to happen. They have to be healthy all the time. Another very good pair. This is a Strain Maker. He's the father. You can see the vibration on him too, just like Mona Lisa. He's a 2005. So he's uh, 13 years old. Still, still fills every egg. Every baby is DNA tested. Guaranteed off him. There will be four babies off him on Peepa this year. A couple inbreds. And then uh, two that will be full brothers or sisters of Sand Spun Silver, the bird we just looked at. He's the father to Sand Spun Silver. When they get to this age, I think when birds get to 10 years old or somewhere in that area, you cannot let them rest. You have to breed them year round. Uh, even, if you, even if you don't want the babies, put them with a hen that's not interesting or a different hen, switch hens or whatever, but they have to keep filling. Because if you shut them down for two, three, four months, the odds of you breeding again off that bird is very slim. They have to mate all the time. I'm not saying every week, but they have to stay in that system. He's a very, very, very good pigeon. And he's 13 years old. And today's date is what? It's uh, April, no, March 25th. 26th. 26th, 2018. This is a very good hen. This is Blue Diamond. Now she never was raised, but she's the mother of Sen Spun Silver. She's also from Germany. So of most of the good birds you have, you often have the family, you have the father, the mother, you... I try, yeah, I always try to buy the parents. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very good hen. 
Mother to send Spun Silver second place million dollar race and grandfather of first place million dollar race. How can you get better? That could be the million dollar race winner. <laughs> you never know, right? One's, one's out and one's coming out, so they got two more of their own babies. They raise their own. So which ra races are you sending this year, Mike? Or not all of them? Mention some of them. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into, uh, I think, the Victoria Falls race. Uh, Jeff does a great job. I think it's a very good race. Uh, the Million Dollar Race, you know, it's probably right now the biggest race in the world. Uh, Sarah does a good job with the Million Dollar Race. It's always nice to go there. It's nice to go to Victoria Falls also. Uh, I'm going uh, to fly in the, in the Golden Agave Race in Portugal. I sent, uh, I think, six birds maybe in 2000, 2015. And I was, I'm going to take a stab at this 42nd or 51st or... It was a really tough race. That was a, a son of Wolverine back then. So uh, I had two early birds in the Golden Agave race that year. I didn't send many, and it was it was tough. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna also try the the Portugal Derby race, uh, Golden Derby, I think it's called. Great Derby. Sergio uh, great, runs great it. Great Derby. Yeah. I'm gonna send some birds there. Uh, I'm going to uh, the Derby Arona Street. race. Yeah. Yeah, in, in Canary Islands, yeah. uh, and then here in the States, the uh, Hoosier, I think it's going to be a great race, it's also a million dollar race. For the people, we, we went there yesterday, we yeah. made a live video, can you summarize the Hoosier uh, for the people who don't know? Yeah, it's, it's uh, a little cheaper, it's $700 a pigeon, $350 when you send one, $350 after the 100 mile qualifying race. They uh, they're gonna fly an eight-hour race, so it's 350 miles or possibly more. If there's a little bit of a tailwind, he may go to 375. He may go to may go to 400, but he's gonna try to get a good, fair, honest, tough race. Uh, that's an eight-hour on the wing flight. Him, his wife, and his three sons, plus his father-in-law, and he has three more helpers pretty much or they do the whole race mm -hmm. uh, his wife's sister works on a computer so it's a family run and the payoff race uh, uh, it's 250,000 for first 1 million 16,000 payout 2019 he's gonna go to a half a million for first so that's five hundred thousand dollars for first uh, you'll probably pay between a million and a half and two hundred thousand next year. So it's going to be, or two two million yeah. next year. It's going to be a, one of the biggest races in the world. He has a great loft, like you saw on the video yesterday. Uh, put a lot of money in it. He has a double clocking system to where the birds have to go through two pads, so no birds will be missed. Every bird will be clocked that comes home. Uh, they do a great job. Okay. So uh, the Hoosier Classic, you can look it up on the internet. Jim Ward and his wife Kelly, they own and run it. And uh, right now they have 3,500 birds registered. They got about 950 there. And uh, I think in the next couple of months there'll be around 4,000 birds. And um, I'm going to take a stab. <clears throat> There's going to be right now 20 countries in the race. Uh, and I'll, I'll say around 4,500 to 5,000 pigeons. So uh, <clears throat> something to think about. You know, the money's there, the honesty's there, and the loft's there, and they will do a great job. Okay. Uh, so what's your ambition on a long term or the coming years for yourself? Uh, I, I'm a real competitive person. <clears throat> I've been in the sport for 40 years. Uh, I'm a good loser, but I don't like to lose. Uh, I was at the million dollar race this last year with my wife, and I had high hopes because in car race five, I had like 15 birds in the top, I'm gonna say 350 places. 
five or six in the top 100 and 10 in the top 200. And I thought, well, this is my year. Let's go to the race. Maybe I could have an incredible race. So among 2,000 people, I had to eat my words and sit there and be very happy and friendly. I'm that type of person. But I am a, I am a fighter. I am a person that wants to win. So it was very hard inside, but on the outside, I was a good player, which everybody should be. Uh, but I do try hard, and I am trying harder this year. And I expect to do, I expect to win, hopefully win another time the million dollar race, or or another big race around the world. But uh, I'm not giving up. I'm trying harder. And I try to buy the best. But uh, it's fun. It's it's it is a lot of fun. You know, you got to have goals. You got to set goals, or you get easy, and then your quality is gonna fall. And I want people to win. I'm I'm as happy as when they win, and their birds are from me. I'm as happy for them as if I won myself. And Jerry Uri in Africa, you know, he was eighth last year uh, in the million dollar race, and then the the third, the fifth. The seventh and eighth place bird had GFL blood in them. Several of the parents were from me. Uh, so having four birds bred down from Gannis family lofts, not 100%, uh, was also good out of eight pigeons, the top eight pigeons in the final race. There was several others. The 22nd place bird was also off a GFL bird. Several other pigeons, but I don't want to get into all that. But I know in the future it's going to get better. And I'm going to try harder, and my wife's going to try harder, and we're going to make GFL, Ghana's Family Love, one of the best in the world. Perfect. So uh, I think we, we've seen the most important things. I think so, too. Yeah. I think you saw the top birds, and yeah. you see everything's kept clean and taken care of every day of the year. Uh, I don't know what more something more I could say, no, but I, just I'm happy the, you made it here, Thomas. And yeah. We spent a couple days together and visited the Hoosier Classic Race, and... We were able to do the interview with my birds in law. Uh, and I want to thank every everybody that puts their trust in the GFL birds. I do my best with my wife. We will always do our best and we will take care of you. So if you have questions or if you want a top bird, call me or call Thomas. One person you. asks, how old were you when you started? Uh... I was uh, 16 years old. My brother had pigeons. My father had pigeons, my grandfather had pigeons. Uh, they flew in a club, a smaller club, they did well. And when I started, there was like 100 members in the Mishawaka Pigeon Club, South Bend Pigeon Club. And the first year I won like, I think three first. Uh, so I, it, it was something, it was something that I think is bred into me that I was supposed to do what I'm doing and I believe with successful people, you have to love your job, you gotta like what you're doing, and it just came natural to me. I, I, uh, I've always been successful, I always wanna be successful, and uh, you know, I try hard, so you gotta, you gotta try hard. Maybe let's go outside, show yeah, we could look at the some loft. of the loft outside, and yep. then we'll, we'll finish. No problem. I built a house in 1987 and uh, built the lofts. Uh, lofts are done before the house is done. But uh, it's a nice area. I got five acres. We got enough room. Uh, birds have plenty of space. I did a darkening video back 22 years ago out of the tall loft there. And I used to race out of that loft for 35 years. Uh, did Which very one? Well. Which one? The tall one on the on the right. Oh. That was the video loft or the loft I flew young birds out of. The middle loft is uh, where I flew old birds out of. Widowhood, double widowhood. And uh, for 30 years, I never took a vacation during the racing season. The wife and I have one daughter, Laura, and we have uh, two granddaughters now, Margot. And Lily and my son-in-law is Howard and their name is Tuthill. Uh, they couldn't be better. 
I'm very happy with them. I'm very proud of them and the way they take care of their children. Um, they mean everything to us. So uh, right now they moved back 10 miles from our house. They, used, they lived in Colorado for several years. So life couldn't get better. Uh, I got my grandchildren, my daughter, and a son-in-law back. So it's good. That's Plus good. my pigeons. Yeah. Somebody's asking, what's your personal favorite of your pigeons? Uh, God, that's a tough question. If I had to keep one pigeon in the whole loft, sentimental reasons, probably... God, it's hard to say. It's... <laughs> You know, you'd have to you'd have to throw Wolverine, Sed and Spun Silver, and uh, Sun City. Yeah, those three cocks, I think, are very very hard to beat. I, I I don't know which birds I would buy besides those if I didn't have them. And as far as hens, Mike has a good one. Mike has a very good one. is is an incredible breeder. She already proved herself. Um, okay. You know, she's good. Do you race in local competition here as well? No, we, we used to have a lot of flyers. Like I mentioned before, there used to be over a hundred. Now there's like four. I don't even know if they're racing anymore. And I, I don't have time. I, I'm a very busy person. Uh, it's hard for me to find time for that. I, I have to have my priorities are my family, my wife. I want to enjoy life a little bit. I'm in a coop probably six hours a day. Uh, thinking of things, changing things. I do have a loft manager that cleans and, and bans birds and records them uh, and takes care of anything on the yard here. But, but uh, I'm, I'm right on it all the time. And if I'm gone, then he's here doing this, but I, I never leave for a long period of time. Okay, we'll say bye. The people. Thanks for watching. Once, yeah, once again, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching, and and uh, if I can do something for you, uh, contact me or contact Pipa. Uh, Thomas will take care of you, and we will have uh, two or three auctions on Pipa this year. Some inbred grandchildren and direct children of Sun City, Sun Spun Silver, Strain Maker, all the key birds. Mike has a good one, Wolverine. So, uh, and every bird's guaranteed to please. I, I will not sell a bird I don't like. But okay. thanks again and talk to you all soon. Thank you, Mike.